Latin America and the Caribbean, a huge region that extends from the tropics to the Antarctic, with very distinct climatic, geographical and economic conditions, inhabited by over half a billion people. Rural women number about 60 million, with great variations in culture, ethnic groups, level of education, and social and economic development. However, some general remarks can be made. More than a quarter of them are householders, for reasons including male immigration in search of employment, rural impoverishment, political instability, and violence which has also led to serious violations of human rights. The burden of working in the fields and selling produce has fallen onto the women's shoulders, in addition to their traditional household chores, fetching wood and water, cooking and bringing up the children. Rural women work on average 16 hours and a half a day, in difficult conditions and for very low wages or income, which are often underestimated because produced in a subsistence type of agriculture. Even if this work is not recognized in official statistics, it provides almost half of the family's income. In all countries, the families living in poverty and destitution are more numerous in rural areas. In Guatemala, rural poverty accounts for 75 to 80 percent, whilst in Argentina it is 17 to 20 percent. One of the region's structural problems in recent decades has been the decrease in the rural population, more than halved due to emigration to the cities. In some countries, such as Peru, Mexico, Brazil, Chile and Cuba, this phenomenon has reached extreme levels and the rural population is currently less than 25%. Whilst in other countries, such as El Salvador, Costa Rica, Honduras and Guatemala, it continues to be more than half the total. The great concentration of land in the hands of a relatively small number of landowners has not been radically changed by the failure of the agrarian reform programs. Three quarters of the region's families do not own any land and therefore have no access to credit. In particular, legal, cultural and social factors restrict ownership by women. Even in countries where agrarian reform programs have been implemented, property has generally been assigned to men. In any case, it is always the women who feed the children with their work in the fields, in the family vegetable gardens, and raising small livestock for domestic consumption. All essential items in the domestic budget. They cook for the family and sell food in public, in cities and in villages. They organize themselves to make up for major institutional shortcomings, as in the case of the Comedores Populares in Peru, where women of grassroots organizations cater for the daily food needs of the less affluent layer of the population. Every day we feed more than a hundred people. We give them soup, a main course and rice. We need help, especially for the children, so that they can have bread and milk. The globalization of economy, the financial crises and the structural adjustment policies that the continent underwent in the 1980s have also had negative consequences for the women and household economies they have to manage. In particular, the large farms and production for export have been favored by structural adjustment 
to the detriment of subsistence farming, which represents the only source of income for many rural women. This adjustment has also led to cuts in government spending in social services, such as education, health and rural infrastructures, with negative consequences on women's time and the organization of their work. Women's work is essential in agricultural production and in livestock raising. In the Andes, for example, women devote a good part of their time to this, representing an important contribution to the household budget. In Bolivia, sheep breeding is connected to spinning and weaving wool to make traditional fabrics. In Guatemala, cooperatives have been set up that, thanks to the millinery skills of the Maya women, produce cotton articles for export, procuring a small income for the weavers. We produce tablecloths, bedspreads, cushions and bags, which we sell to Italy, Germany and the United States. Women play an important role as seasonal labor in paid work in the food industry for export. They are still greatly discriminated against in pay. Their work is not guaranteed by any contract and they have no social security. Like the so-called maquiladoras, the peacetime agricultural workers in Central America, even little girls work during the coffee and banana harvests. Or the boyas frias, seasonal farmhands that work in the sugarcane plantations of Brazil. Thanks to their inventive and spirited initiative, women are the protagonists of food security through sustainable development. in fish processing, in the production of vegetables or poultry to sell on the market. Their work is of basic importance for the family nucleus. We need a truck to sell the chickens because we have no way of transporting them. For this reason, it is urgent to create better infrastructures, roads and means of transport to study methods and technologies that reduce costs and allow the conservation of products. And all this to give the producers new market outlets. Maize, beans and potatoes. These products originated in the continent and the rural women, with their knowledge, have maintained their different species and varieties in harmony with the agroclimatic conditions. For example, the potato, which is dehydrated to obtain chuño, which can be kept for long periods. Women have always practiced agricultural biodiversity and continue to do so up to the present. To curb the growing female poverty in the countryside, programs have been started up to help women find more remunerative activities such as flower growing in small greenhouses in Mexico and Colombia. We are a cooperative with 21 women. We were looking for alternative crops to grow without fertilizers and fungicides. They suggested flowers and the variety we liked best and which seemed the most suitable are antarium. We haven't been able to develop the nursery very much due to a lack of economic means, because we are poor and the majority of us are the breadwinners for our families. The level of schooling in rural areas is still insufficient and does not take into account ethnic diversity and cultural needs. The original population numbers about 50 million people 
with their own traditions, language and costumes, defended and handed down mainly by rural women. In any case, girls' access to primary schools is showing a good increase, and in several countries, their numbers have reached those of boys. However, less than half of rural women have access to extension services, technical assistance and training. Education is the keystone that can guarantee qualified employment for women of the new generations and ensure their social insertion in a recognized role. In several of the continent's universities and research institutes, many young women are being trained or working towards improving agricultural and food production. Despite heavy family burdens, the number of cooperatives and associations where women can meet to discuss and improve their knowledge is constantly increasing. In these organizations, and with the new means of communication, such as this radio, which broadcasts programs on food education in the Quechua language in the area of Cusco, women reinforce their identity, learning models of participation and increasing links of cooperation. The FAO's Plan of Action for the Development of Rural Women aims to encourage access to the land and productive resources in Latin America as well, strengthening the role of women in decision and policy making so that they will increasingly become the protagonists of development towards food security. <laughs> 